Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today we're going to do part three of a series that I'm really enjoying and that's fixing the Daily Bugle building for Brick Nottingham. Now before we break into brand new territory and hopefully do more than one floor this time of the Daily Bugle building set 76178 there are a few amendments coming from, well, me and you, <laughs> both directions, uh, to practically every element we've done so far. And one that's been really nagging me is the taxi uh, that comes with this set. Now, already I've told you I'm not applying the stickers to make this a taxi because I've got loads of taxis in my city and they all look the same and I kind of like it that way. So I'm going to remove the sign off the top and have this as a regular car. Even though it's massive compared with some of the cars in my city, I just figure it's an American import and the car from this sort of era were absolutely huge so that works fine but one thing I've never really liked about it is it looks a bit too clunky uh, and it's kind of hard to put your finger on but I've pretty much narrowed it down to the roof and the fact that the roof is kind of these two plates thick uh, and I think that doesn't really work very well but it's a bit hard to change because the roof is seven studs long so if I pull this off uh, and I've already made one change which is to basically remove the kind of tile thing that's usually used to mount minifigures on. Uh, so we've actually got some studs showing here because this roof was just falling off incredibly easily, much like a lot of the details on the uh, Daily Bugle building itself. So that now stays on quite firmly, which I like, but this is the windscreen I'm going to replace. And that's because I'm going to replace it with one that's slightly different. You think, hold on, that was the same thing. No, you see what I mean? It's just slightly different. And that brings in the back uh, kind of ledge of the roof in one stud which means we only need to bridge a gap of six studs now so you see that's like that so really then it's very simple i can use one of these dedicated roof pieces that's used on a lot of city cars to replace that clunky roof and oh i just think the difference is night and day i mean it just looks so in with the styling i think the sleek back windscreen looks really cool uh, and well, it just works. So that is a really easy fix that came from my <laughs> niggling fear of that roof looking a bit too clunky. Uh, and I'm really happy with it. So let me know what you think of that one. But I think that's a really good start. Okay, so the next piece for amendments is the roof. And I've just got it jacked up on these bricks temporarily just so it can fit on my desk without this whole <laughs> end construction falling off. And that's kind of against the principle of making this whole building a bit more stable, isn't it? The fact that I can't take the roof off and put it down without it snapping. Uh, but I think the joke is well worth it. So hey ho. <laughs> so you'll have to excuse these brightly coloured rainbow bricks. Uh, so yeah, a few changes. Uh, last time I used reddish brown bricks here to do the angled element and people suggested that could be a sort of botched repair and might be quite funny uh, but I figure that later I'm going to add a reason why this is very recently snapped so that is why I've changed these two grey ones that I managed to dig out. Uh, another thing people didn't like was the bugle still being on the sign uh, and I always intended to change that and here is my suggestion my first one anyway uh, and it's little robin <laughs> some people suggested that i should add a robin hood bricks kind of head or something like that but i thought actually a physical robin looked quite fun with his red breast and his uh, brown feathers and so on he's a bit crude but i quite like it and i think that basically he can be clipped on at a angle at this sort of area to be sort of accentuating the fact that this sign is falling over so I think I can probably get it right about like that so that is my idea for the kind of logo that breaks up Brick Nottingham from the word post yeah I quite like that do tell me what you think though uh, and then the only other thing for the top floor at the moment is around the back golly am I gonna be able to turn this around uh, it's quite difficult uh, and it was the fact that I had two tread plates here but I didn't have one on the top step so I've changed that and I've just uh, got a sticker that was four long but I cut it in half and that's because the other end was irretrievably damaged that was on my recent uh, Brick Hall 100 actually so I've just got that in the gap there after some sticker surgery and that means that I've got tread plates on all three steps now so that looks really good so thanks very much for that suggestion here's your bedoying <laughs> Now there are some further suggestions that I may yet use, but I don't think the time is right now. I think I'll have to basically uh, do the sort of setup 
uh, with all the other things and the reason for this sign being broken, for example. But one I quite like that's sort of in waiting is to have somebody sort of mid-painting or repairing this sign or something like that. So maybe we could have the bottom part of the T a different colour and the person that's sort of hanging off this sign with paintbrush in hand uh, is obviously at a very perilous angle and is sort of mid-falling. So that might be really funny and he'd look very alarmed indeed. So I quite like that idea, uh, but we'll see if you're going to get a bedoying later with uh, whether we actually use it. So yeah, a couple of amendments on the roof. And then finally onto what we did last time, which was the top full floor. And I've just done a couple of amendments here. One was to bridge the small gap between the bottom of the fire escape and what would be the floor below or above uh, by using one modified plate and a normal plate, just so there was a continued sort of uh, red uh, presence rather than having a gap in between. Uh, and some people suggested that I actually have the ladders going from the balconies down, having them attached that way rather than going up. Uh, but obviously that wouldn't work when you separated each of the floors because, well, we'd have a floppy ladder down here and it'd be getting in the way. Uh, but yeah, that was a good suggestion. So thanks for that one. Uh, and then another one, which I really like, was to actually add some doors to the fire escape so it looked like people could get on. Uh, now, I didn't want it to be kind of an opening door because I thought that might get in the way and be a bit disruptive. Uh, so what I did was put in a black frame, normal 1x4x6 one, and I put in the um, trans black glass just to make it look really dark. Uh, so you could see that it was a doorway, but it wasn't sort of you know, adding too much or distracting too much. Uh, and what I've actually got is these interesting sort of older frames, which I don't know if you can see, but they've actually got the four holes, so two on that side and two on that side. So they can actually hold two panes of glass each. So this one's got a pane of glass on this side and on this side. So you'll see there's not any great big uh, sort of rebate on either side, because whichever way I uh, tried this in it kind of looked weird when it was recessed on this side and it kind of looked weird when it was recessed from the internal perspective as well because it's right next to that lift so basically uh, using these really old ones and having two panes of glass which I probably will never be able to get out now I don't know how you can do it because usually you push it from the out uh, from the middle out so anyway they're probably stuck in here forever now um, but using two of those uh, I've made what looks like a very dark uh, doorway but nonetheless a doorway uh, so yeah, I really like that. I think that's a really good uh, addition and you can really see that you could gain entrance or exit from the building from there uh, while still not really interfering too badly uh, with the insides. So yeah, I really like that. So that was a great suggestion. Thank you very much. The other thing is it's made, uh, well, it saved us a lot of bricks on the outside and having a really sort of blank piece of wall. So yeah, I think it looks really great. Uh, and the windows above the door kind of tie in with all the ones uh, on the other panes as well. So that is excellent. Right, so now what I need to do is move from this floor to the next one down and pretty much do everything we've uh, tried and tested now. Keep the elevator on the back wall, but remove the rest. Uh, change the front so it's actually connected and everything's nice and solid. Uh, change all the fire escapes. We've got one balcony, double uh, ladder and one of these and one of these now. Uh, and then we'll be making real progress. All right, well, it was a lot easier this time because I knew exactly what I was doing. Uh, so this is the next floor down, second top one. <laughs> um, and we've still got the Green Goblin attached just because I don't know exactly what I'm going to replace him with, but I do think he's going. So don't worry too much about him and the fact that he's sort of bouncing around. Uh, but the rest of the front, which was really fragile, probably the most fragile part of the entire set, is now fully incorporated and very strong indeed. And I've still kept the explosion because I think the new idea uh, will incorporate that uh, in the same way. So we've just got glass on this side as we always had, but I've got my whole new uh, setup with the fire escape door here, uh, the extra sort of plates and so on down here. Uh, and then on the back, I've kept the elevator as usual, the corridor into the rest of the office. And this is that weird bit where we had kind of the back wall full of glass uh, and then this sort of wall on the inside of the glass that I really didn't like at all. So I've just moved that out one whole uh, stud and effectively now I guess it's kind of a partition wall in between this office and say the next one or something like that and it makes a lot more sense. And the fact that we've got some different coloured bricks here and there really doesn't matter because it's going to be going against the wall. Uh, unfortunately I had a few more tiles here to extend this distance out one as well. 
uh, and the interior is exactly the same otherwise uh, just see if I can show you a bit better this way there we go so there is the office uh, and there is the corridor now I did leave the spider in on the wall uh, and I don't really know why I've done that uh, because what I did do was remove the web that was kind of in here as well I figured that was just totally inappropriate and getting in the way uh, <laughs> but why I haven't taken out the spider for the same reason I've got absolutely no idea so uh, yeah maybe they've got a spider infestation uh, but it is very big uh, so maybe I'll come back and actually take that out in due course but uh, it didn't seem important when I was doing it uh, so there we go uh, another floor with the double fire escape I really like that with the uh, door there and fortunately that's the main viewing angle that we're going to be seeing this building from so it definitely won't be hidden which is always a positive uh, and then the only other thing I did was liberate some of the newspapers from the inside that were kind of blocking the doorway uh, because I really liked them the conspirator newspaper and look we've got a cow getting beamed up by a UFO which is very appropriate for my city so I figured that this would be wasted on the inside of this building so I'm going to put that whole stack of papers uh, near one of the many newsstands in the city or maybe the one that's at the uh, bottom of here if we keep it so yeah that's definitely worth putting somewhere a lot more prominent cool so there is my no uh, nonsense second floor very robust very similar to the others so I suggest we go to the next one uh, so we've got two more floors to go the ground one which will probably be the most work uh, and then the one in between this and that uh, and that's going to be a bit more difficult because that is the first one of the floors that's actually got three sections wide. So I'm going to have to change the floor footprint. Uh, I'm going to have to change, uh, well, all the things that we've changed in this one, uh, but also kind of reduce the contents of all of the floors. So they've got a lot more going on. It's the main newsroom. And I'm not sure if that's all going to fit into this kind of concertina space. So, yeah, I'm going to have to probably cull some of it. And that's going to be a bit hard to decide. So yeah, this one is going to take a lot longer, I imagine, than the one we just did. But let's get going. OK, well, here is the newsroom as was. And I've kind of got to work out now what I'm keeping and what I'm losing from the inside. So this is the old floor. And this is my new setup for the new floor. Uh, and the new front wall will be attached to this slightly recessed uh, level there. So I've got to work out how much of this I can squeeze into my reduced footprint. But I figure if I get rid of this front uh, two studs worth of tiles, so it kind of goes like that, and have these desks kind of pushed right up against the front windows, then... Well, there's only a little bit I really have to cull off the back wall. I can probably move the water cooler in or just use it on a different build. Uh, and I can even keep all of these chairs. So, yeah, I think it actually isn't going to be too much of a problem after all. Uh, I'll definitely need to do something different with this. But then I didn't really like this tan bit anyway. <laughs> and here is the newsroom inside with absolutely everything. Well, almost. There's a bottle I took out and I've moved the filing cabinet over here and uh, shifted the kitchen along and it's not quite uh, blocking the fire escape door uh, I mean it is very crammed now packed and stacked but that is generally the way I like things to be so I'm all right with that uh, and I've got the column of sort of computer screens and so on or still fit in position there I'm going to have to change the top for it all to sort of uh, fit with the uh, rest of the roof when I put that on but yeah I think that's looking pretty good even if it is a little busy. Uh, but yeah, we've got the fire escape all changed. We've got the foldable ladder that goes down to reach the ground. Uh, and then we've got this one here, which has got another one of those fire doors on. So that's all looking good. Uh, and it's all fitted in so it can go snug against the wall. Nothing overhanging the back with the water cooler there and so on. Uh, yeah, so all I've got to really do now is put on the front. And, hmm, these screens... Um, I mean, in many respects, I really like them because they're quite colourful and so on, but they have got sort of Spider-Man on and Mysterio and all the rest of it, and even mention of a mayor who isn't the current mayor of Brick Nottingham. <laughs> so maybe that's the new one coming in. Uh, maybe this is a news channel from some other faraway destination where everyone has pink skin rather than the yellow skin of my city. So it could work. So what I'm going to do first of all is put all of this on the front of my uh, new floor and keep it but 
yeah, I might get rid of all these screens when I fully demarvel, uh, fully demarvel it uh, in due course. But uh, yeah, I'll probably value your opinion on that as well. So the front is on with all of the screens. And I do really like them, actually. Just reattaching them made me realise that I think I really would like to keep this. The DB News just could be any channel around the world. And just because they've got a picture of uh, Spider-Man doesn't mean much. It could be uh, advertising a movie or something like that that's coming up. So I think I will try and keep that. Um, yeah, really liking this side. The back's all nice and trim. Uh, when I put this back in, I figured I didn't really have to connect it with the ceiling because now it's reduced in depth. I don't think we really need a sort of cross member here to brace the uh, whole thing. So now it's a bit more open and easier to see as well. So I just capped that off with a round tile. Uh, and well, you can see the interior does look very busy, but I think it works well. So the main task of this, as you know, is to make it a lot more solid. And it is with the uh, things not falling off, the whole front falling off and taking all of these TV screens with it. So I think that's been a real success. So Actually, if I just grab the last one we did and try and perch that on top, it should fit on very easily. And I do definitely prefer these double height uh, fire escapes. I think that looks a lot better and they kind of meet now due to that extra bit of uh, plates that I put on before. Yeah, so that's looking really good. Very happy with that. Uh, so what I might do next, rather than move on to the absolute ground floor, is do my new floor uh, because I'm going to try and do one extra one. Uh, at least one to start with anyway, uh, to try and make the building a whole load taller. So I've got an absolute load of tile pieces that I've pulled off with all of the sort of modified bricks that hold them on. So I think I'll have enough of those uh, by a long way. And then how many windows do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and kind of a half. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Missing a few because of the funny ones that are halfway up on the old build. So I've got exactly the right amount, I think. Awesome. Uh, but will I have enough plates and so on? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. In fact, I'm not going to have enough of these ladders, that's for sure. But uh, we'll get pretty close, I think. All right. So I do have enough pieces, as it turned out, to do an additional floor. I have had to use a completely different combination of plates as the plate layer which means I need one more support just to make it work. But I don't see why that is a particular problem. Uh, and I've kind of stopped before tying it because the only colour that I've got enough tiles of, would you believe, to do this floor, other than grey sort of pavement colours, is orange. And that's a pretty stark colour to do the floor of any building, <laughs> you must, uh, must agree. But then again, this building has had some pretty horrendous colours. We've got the sort of flamish yellow orange in this one. Uh, the ground floor has got the bright green colour, which is pretty garish. And we've had dark red and dark azure and all sorts. So maybe orange is right. So you'll have to give me uh, an idea of whether you think that is just too hideous to use or not. Maybe it's in keeping with a very grey building. Uh, and in front of that, or rather behind that, you'll see that I've managed to incorporate an open lift setting. Uh, and this was an idea that was provided by one of my subscribers. And I've got to say, it's worked out absolutely brilliant. So here's your bedoying. Uh, we've got the same lift uh, buttons and doors, but the doors are like half open. And I figure that's because somebody, if I just sort of put a jumper plate in, and I'm going to use Spider-Man as my uh, example, uh, has just arrived and is exiting the lift as the doors are opening, maybe because he's in a hurry, or just as they're closing because he's uh, <laughs> forgotten to get out, I don't know. But I reckon that looks really good. Uh, and against the wall of the Lego room, that will be an interesting backdrop uh, to give some sort of uh, light to his uh, profile so you can see what's going on. So I think that works really well. So thanks very much for that idea. I think you'll agree that looks great. Uh, so when it comes to the uh, lift things, I did have actually a second arrow, so I could put that there as the up, but I figured I'd change one to green as if it sort of went ping uh, because the lift has arrived at this floor uh, from, well, lower down, I suppose, if it's that one that's green. So I thought that was quite a good idea. So you have to let me know whether you like that one as well. Uh, and then you can see very clearly now from this side the fire escape that I've replicated on the outside. And I've actually added to all of the floors now an additional set here. I was using just a normal 1x4 plate, but I've added more of these uh, modified 
plates with the rail on because, wow, I've got an absolute stack of them now, <laughs> thanks to uh, all of the bits that I've dismantled on this set. So it's good to put some of them to use. And I think it actually works well just uh, defining a line between the fire door and the rest of the windows. So I quite like that. Uh, yeah, so that's on all the floors now. Uh, and I've actually got two additional ladders. I haven't had to cannibalize the sort of fold out two from the very bottom floor. And that's because I thought ahead and on my last bricks and pieces order, when the Daily Bugle was incredibly new, I put two of these into my bag. So I've got exactly the right number. Huh, it's almost like I planned it. So that's worked really well. Uh, so I think we've got the start of a brilliant extra floor. I've got the five columns that I need to do the front with rails and so on. I did have to cannibalize a few of these uh, modified bricks, the sort of uh, ones with the two studs on the side uh, from the ground floor, but that's fine because um, they, it's not going to need all the ones it's got when we take the back off it, of course. Uh, I've also got the four panels to go in between all of those rails. Uh, and I've got my sort of uh, top ridge there all done, ready to go on as well. So it's really like this just to decide what we're going to do with the interior. I've got all my orange tiles here, which I can use, and a few jumpers and all the rest of it. But the main question, which I really want your help with, is, well, what should I put in this floor? Now, I've already had some suggestions, uh, and they were things like doing a, a weather person or weather girl, weather man in front of a weather map, or a uh, camera sort of filming somebody reading news or something like that. But I figure both of those ideas are quite TV focused. And the Daily Bugle was a newspaper, and so is the Nottingham Post or the Brick Nottingham Post. Uh, so I figure we should have something more newspapery. Now, we've got a newsroom. We've got some offices, so I was kind of thinking maybe this floor would have the printing presses on it, or at least the beginnings of a huge machine uh, that was printing all of the newspapers. So do tell me if you think that's a good idea, uh, and if you think you can come up with something better, then please do let me know, because this floor uh, is begging for something interesting in it. Uh, and I haven't got enough tiles to actually even cover the entire floor. So taking a big section out of the middle because of a huge machine would actually be a good thing. So that is question number one, contents of floor. Uh, and then the second question is really what we're going to do with the whole building. Now, I deliberately started at the top of this uh, because I wanted to leave the bottom floor until last. Not because it's the most complicated. Well, it is the most complicated and we will be fixing it onto a uh, 16 by 32 base plate instead of the 32 by 32 when it's already on. But because I figure that's going to be the area where, well, whatever the new scene is, uh, is going to be happening most, if you see what I mean. So I was figuring what I was going to do. Now, I've already got quite a firm plan, I think, to de-marvel it, i.e. take out Spider-Man and all of his friends and all of the Marvel baddies and do my own thing. Why? Just because, well, I'm not massively into Marvel. Already it's the uh, Brick Nottingham Post, so it's not that relevant already. Uh, and because, well, I want mine to be a bit different from everyone else's. Uh, and it kind of occurred to me that I've got another project that I'm going on with at the moment that might dovetail with this very well. But I thought I'd ask your opinion and see if you thought it was a good idea. And that's that I've been buying all of the parts over, well, a couple of months now at least, for all of the side builds, all the little uh, sort of builds like mechs and things like that and buggies and so on, for all of the Ultra Agent sets. Now, these were sets released in the early 2000s, and they pretty much span set 70160 to 70173. And I've really been focusing not on the Ultra Agents themselves, but the Ultra Villains. So all of the baddies in each of those sets. So what my plan would be is to get those uh, builds made, remove all of the sort of goody stuff and all of the things that are really a bit too big to include in a scene like this, uh, which would leave me with 13 evil villains, plus the kind of brainwashed Professor Brainstein character. Uh, and maybe that's too many, but maybe spread them all over the Brick Nottingham Post. So kind of a similar scene that's going on in the original Daily Bugle set would be going on here, uh, but with the ultra villains. And I think that's quite a good idea because 
although I collected all the minifigures for the ultra villains, they've spent about the last two years uh, holed up in the very top of the town hall building where they've been having a sort of meeting, <laughs> which has lasted that full two years. Uh, and they still haven't done anything, wreaked any havoc around Brick Nottingham. So I figure it's about time that they finished their plan for world domination. And clearly they've decided that uh, the uh, Brick Nottingham post building is their number one target. Uh, and they could be, well, attacking it. So as part of that, there's a character called Tremor, who's got a great big tank that's got kind of two punchy hands that sort of smashes through brick walls. And one of my ideas was to have that tank kind of in the ground floor, like it had totally smashed through from the facade wall side and was almost sticking out of the front, having caused it all to sort of tumble down around it. And maybe the whole building's at risk because of it. And maybe that's why the Brick Nottingham Post is sort of unhinged in the way it is. What's more, we could have all of the flyers because half of those guys are on little flying buggies and scooters and what have you, or have got their own sort of jetpack type devices uh, and could be flying around and shooting their flip fire missiles and what have you. And maybe that's why the uh, Daily Post, uh, sorry, Brick Nottingham Post uh, sign has been uh, knocked over. Um, but, you know, the possibilities for using those characters and those uh, machines is almost endless. It could look like it's being completely swarmed. So I think that's quite a good idea, but I don't really want to go ahead if everyone's going to groan and think it's awful that I've just taken all this stuff off a building to add a load of other stuff on. So I'd really appreciate your opinion. Uh, so really, just to summarise then, we've got two questions that we want uh, your feedback from. Uh, what should I put in this extra floor? And, well, should I incorporate all of the Ultra Agents baddies, which I'm calling the Ultra Villains, into a great big tower high uh, extravaganza? Well, I do really like that scene through the window, and it's very visible, so that's really nice to see. Obviously, if we go ahead with the Ultra Agents idea, it won't be Spider-Man coming out to lift but one of the villains there. Uh, you can see I've added the tiles, at least some of them, uh, just to start off that orange feel so you can get kind of a feel for how it'd look. It doesn't actually look that bad now through the grey, I don't think. Uh, put all the front on uh, and it's looking good. So we've made quite a lot of progress today, actually, in that we've done two whole floors in the sort of conversion to the more robust style, which I'm very much a fan of. And I can combine these together, hopefully. Um, and... I'm really a big fan of all the changes we've made, especially to the fire escapes, which I just think make uh, a great deal of difference this way with half of the number of balconies on uh, and twice the length of ladder. Uh, and all of the other recommendations you've given, including the changes to the sign that we did at the beginning, uh, have really made this a lot better. So I'm really looking forward to doing the final part of this, which will be the ground floor with maybe ultra agents, baddies all storming around it and probably up the sides of the building and all around the air as well, because I will have to give Firestar to Mrs. Hood as promised, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, yeah, it's been a really good session. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out all of the links in the description below. Uh, my address is still available for if you want to send a package to me. It won't be part of Brickhall 100, of course, but uh, I will still get to it in part of my normal hauls. Uh, so that address is at least current until the end of September, where I may extend it, or if it's uh, ceased to be used, then maybe not. <laughs> anyway, um, on Wednesday, we'll be doing a Brick Hall, which will be the second part of Brick Hall 100, also known as Brick Hall 101. <laughs> uh, and then on Friday, I'm hoping to do another build in the fairground. So until then, see you! <laughs>